We'd like to welcome our viewers back to our special episodes of Islam in America. And we've been visiting Muslim businesses here in the Muslim communities here in America. And I think that now we're visiting the location of one of the more successful Muslim enterprises here in America, which is uh, Universal Companies, which was founded by our brother Luke Mayan, also known as Kenny Gamble. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, brother. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. We're going to talk a bit about your business because it's, that's a really a very important story that Muslims should hear. But before we do that, I want to talk a bit about you mm -hmm. and how you came to Islam. Yeah, well, well, first of all, welcome to Philadelphia. Thank you. you know? And uh, <clears throat> uh, my story is, is not uncommon to many uh, other African Americans. Mm -hmm. uh, how I came to Islam is through, um, I guess, starting out as a, at a young age. My mother and my family were a very spiritual family, mm -hmm. always in search of uh, closeness to uh, to God, and and that type of uh, environment is what I grew up in. Mm -hmm. And during the, um, I would say the uh, the '60s and the there was a whole revolution here in uh, a cultural revolution here in America amongst the African American community and much of that cultural revolution was based on um, uh, Islam mm -hmm. and Elijah Muhammad mm -hmm. and the Nation of Islam right. which I uh, which attracted I mean uh, a lot of attention in mm -hmm. our community it was something brand new um, but what was the talk at that time about the, the Nation of Islam? Well, I mean, the Nation of Islam were? basically was, uh, was an organization, and it uh, was a tremendous brotherhood mm -hmm. that promoted and uh, uh, self-help mm -hmm. and, uh, and do for self. Mm -hmm. And being a, a, a conscious person, I looked at our communities and I looked at us as a people. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that that was something that the African American community really needed to think about and to get involved in is to help themselves mm -hmm. and to be uh, be conscious of of the uh, the environment around them mm -hmm. and as it relates to uh, uh, as it relates to economics and as it relates to religion and then politics and all of those other things that go yeah, along. Just want to inject a little bit for our viewers who may not who may not know. Uh, Brother Luke Mann. Uh, he's a, he was also a very uh, famous music producer here, and he was able to travel around this country and maybe visit and see a lot of the uh, Afro-American mm -hmm. communities in America. Mm -hmm. So I just want to get. Well, I, yeah, I did. I did travel uh, extensively uh, after being in the music industry, and I think that even makes me a little more sensitive to uh, to many of the things that was going on in the in the city, in the country, and in the world, as a matter of fact, as it relates to, to people, because most of my songs and the things that I, I was writing about, you know, you, you write about people and you write for people, so I was very sensitive to human affairs. Mm -hmm. And um, after seeing the African American community all over this country in such a devastating condition, mm -hmm that you uh, you try to find answers uh, to that and find out, well, why? Well, Brother Lukman, just for historical perspective, yeah. can you just give us a feel of what it was like to be an Afri African American in the times you're speaking of? Well, to me, in that, in that time during the 60s, you know, my, it, it's for, I only can speak for myself, but basically my whole uh, uh, focus was music. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what my uh, desire was, is to, to be a, a musician and a producer and a composer but in doing so uh, as I said a moment ago that during that time you had all types of, of, of movements going you had the um, Martin Luther King you had Malcolm X you had uh, Elijah Muhammad I mean it, it was a revolution there was there was a time in this country where African-American people were not only fighting for their civil rights, mm -hmm. but also it was a time when the government of America was being challenged mm -hmm. by the African American community. There was tremendous economic uh, uh, moves made in this uh, this country, mm -hmm. and so as a young man during that time, and after getting out of high school, <clears throat> and and much of the historical aspects you have, you have to really look at the historical aspects of African American people is that 
to, through the education system, they don't teach you much about the African experience mm -hmm. here in America. Mm -hmm. And so when you get out of school, I learned more out of school about African American life than than I did in school. Mm -hmm. Basically, school was void of any historical aspects of African American life. And so the question you asked, what was it like? It was like, uh, it was like a light bulb almost going off in my head mm -hmm. to find out that, that, um, that these conditions still existed mm -hmm. in America and that there were people in this country men, women, organizations that have been fighting and organizing to try and level the playing field for African American people as it relates to politics, education, and also a different version, a different story about religion. Mm -hmm. And um, and I had access to those things and so it was, it was a very uh, gratifying time for myself to be able to have access to that information. Well, Brother Lukman, let me ask you, now as we know it, this was the condition of African Americans at that time. Did that make them more predisposed to listen to the mes message of Islam? Well, I think that the message of Islam, Islam had always, always been in this country. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were uh, Moorish Americans, there were, um, there were people of Arab descent, you know, pe people from all over, but no one really concentrated on the African American community to bring the message of Islam to African Americans, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, that's why I mentioned the Nation of Islam was a vehicle that came to the um, uh, to the need of African American community, mm -hmm. do for self, mm -hmm. and that whole philosophy of doing for self was basically a nationalistic kind of, uh, um, of uh, concept because of the condition that African American people were in. That they were dependent on others mm -hmm. because of education, be because of the historical aspects of African American people in this country through slavery and whatever. Mm -hmm. That community had become a dependent society and it was time and still time for it to be independent. And I think Islam, the thought of Islam, brought in that independence, mm -hmm. consciousness, to a group of people who were divided, that this showed some form of unity, the Nation of Islam as, as an organization. And um, one other thought on that, and as that seed of Islam was introduced into the community that those seeds were the names of Allah which had I had never even heard of it before mm -hmm. the name of Muhammad mm -hmm. the Quran these were the seeds that were dropped into the community that and when you look today those seeds are being nurtured and they're growing into a strong Islamic community here. In so uh, in terms of your career at that time when you became Muslim, mm -hmm. did you becoming Muslim affect your career at all? Me becoming Muslim, uh, it, it did not af affect my career. It enhanced my career. It enhanced me as a human being. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think I, I grew tremendously at uh, becoming Muslim because uh, anytime you educate yourself and and you feed your spirit, mm -hmm. then um, then you you automatically are in a position where you can be more useful to yourself and to to uh, society. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it helped it helped me uh, tremendously in my business and uh, personally as as a.